Hello my friends, I'm Brett Larkin. Welcome back to my channel and especially huge welcome if you're new. If you're type A, like me, you find restorative yoga very challenging. It's hard to just do nothing. In this sequence, we're putting together three postures that while they are restorative, they are a little bit more active in nature. This will hopefully be an approachable way to incorporate some restoration, some restorative yoga into your life. You're going to need one block for this sequence, and if you don't have the block, just get some big books or a stack of books. Even a shoebox would work. And then for our last pose, we'll be doing a supported backbend. For that, I'm gonna show a very complex setup with a bunch of props. For those of you that have props at home, uplifted members, I know a lot of you do. So grab two bolsters, or something you could use as a makeshift bolster, like a big couch cushion, a strap if you have one, and if you don't have any of those things, just grab a blanket. Literally, it could be like a rolled up towel. Here I am with my couch cushion and bolster. So you can see they're really quite similar. So just grab something like this or just simply a blanket. If you don't have a bolster at home, I'll show you lots of different ways you can get into this juicy setup. To begin, come on into child's pose. And if you have that block or are working with the block, two options are that you can put the block the long way between your heels here to fold forward, or you can take the block underneath the forehead, which is what I'm going to do. Knees can be touching or as wide as the mat, your choice, just sink in. Immediately from here, begin to slow down your breath. Do a check-in, notice if the shoulders are tense. If they are, take the elbows as wide as the mat and bring the fingertips to touch in front of you in a diamond shape. See if you can begin to count out your inhales and exhales. So when we're doing a restorative practice with limited time, diving straight into our breath to work to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, quiet down that fight or flight response that's so often taking charge of the whole body and mind is really the best way to use your time effectively. So inhale for a count of three, breathing in, filling up belly, ribs, chest. Pause. Exhale for three, contracting the abdominals so you get all the air out of the body and pause. And do that a few more times on your own, just settling in, breathing for three. Pause, breathing out for three. And pause, last time on your own. And from here, extend the arms forward, curl the toes under, press the hips up and back, coming into downward facing dog. So we're gonna do downward dog with the head on the block. Now, the only way to do this successfully is with a lot of experimentation. So you can bend through the knees, first down dog of the day, find some movement, but then we will find stillness and hold here. So start to think about what height you want your block or whatever you're working with, books or, and you want that block to be right on the hairline. So right hitting between your forehead and where your hair starts. That's the sweet spot. So see if you can find that. And a trick or a hack here is instead of moving the block all around your mat is to kind of just walk forward and walk back. <laughs> I find that's easier than adjusting the block sometimes to find that ideal position. Spread the fingers wide. Press down through the knuckles. And I'm gonna time us. We'll take another maybe 30 seconds or so just to fidget here to find exactly where you want to be. And then we're gonna hold for three minutes. So fidget, find that ideal place. Really block pressing into forehead hairline. 
And then see if you can come into stillness. So pedaling the legs is okay at the beginning or as we just find where we want to be here, but then spread the toes just as you spread the fingers. Yearn the heels towards the ground. It's completely okay if the knees are deeply bent. Send the sitting bones high to the sky. That's a great place to be. And just feel the head supported. Rest of the body definitely working. And find your breathing here. Coming into complete stillness now, resisting the urge to fidget or bend one knee and then the other. Knees can be bent for sure, but wherever you are now, we're just still. No more pedaling the legs. Drop fully into the breath here. Inhaling three and pause. Exhaling three and pause. One more full minute here. Nicely done, bend the knees. Come back into your child's pose variation. Keep the breath full, rest completely. Next posture, we're going to take a wide legged forward fold with the block. So, you can widen your legs. Make sure the big toes are in, so you're a little bit pigeon-toed, so the toes are kind of diagonally in, like so. Find the weight equally on all four corners of the feet. And then for this one, same thing, you're gonna use the block, but this time, and you'll experiment with where you want your head on the block or the support. Again, you can stack up extra books or, you know, take a moment, pause the video if you need to. This time, however, we want the crown of the head directly on the block. So instead of that hairline that we did in Down Dog, we're aiming for literally the top of the head to be on the block. Now, you can definitely bend the knees here. You can definitely play with how wide you want your stance. So bringing the legs closer together or farther apart. Just begin to navigate to where you might want the block to really have the crown of the head supported. And then begin to deepen your breath. This crown of head point is said to be 
a major nadi or energy point in the body. So by gently stimulating it, you're really encouraging the whole body to both open and relax. Arms are anywhere that supports you. It can be a little bit ahead of you or directly under the shoulders. Resist the urge to fidget. Once you've found where you want to be, fully drop in. Final minute here. And gently pull up through the legs, feel the thigh bones engage. Keep the face and the head and everything else soft. So we're practicing engagement in the lower body and total restoration, relaxation in the upper body. Walk the hands underneath the shoulders if they're not already. Come back down into that child's pose. So we're staying low to the ground at all times. Your choice, child's pose with the block or however feels nourishing to you, drop in. And keep in your breath. Gently press yourself up. So for our last pose, we're doing a restorative back bend. And this is where I'm going to show you a couple different setups, variations you can do, depending what props you have at home. So if you don't have any bolsters at home, you're going to either use the block or whatever you were using as the block, cover it with a blanket or towel, and you'll use this to help you create a little shelf for your shoulders. So you wanna lean back and have your shoulders just barely overhanging your support. You're gonna take the arms in a cactus shape and then dip the chin into the chest. So you don't want your chin back and your neck extending. You want the back of the neck long, chin dipping into the chest. So it'll look like this and you'll extend the legs. So notice how my shoulders are not on the mat, they're elevated, and the back of the neck is long, chin dipped in. If you don't have the, the block or support, again, you can just make the blanket really thick or take a couple blankets or that couch cushion that I showed at the beginning and use that as a support and lie over that. The back bend will be a little bit more subtle, but that's okay. Now, for those of you that have 
two bolsters or a bolster and a couch cushion. You're just going to line them up on the mat like so. And if you have the strap, which is optional, you're going to have the strap in a nice big loop and put it around the bottom bolster. Put that big loop underneath. And then same idea. You're going to lie down so your legs are extended on the bottom bolster or couch cushion. Make the strap at the level of your thighs and tighten. So this is really nice because it's going to hold your thighs in place <laughs> so that you don't have to worry about them splaying off the bolster. It just makes you feel really nice and secure. This, of course, is an optional step. Then you're going to lie down, and again, you want your shoulders just off your support. Arms in that cactus shape, and then chin dipping into the chest so the back of the neck is nice and long. If you happen to have sandbags at home like I do, you could also place a sandbag on the hips or on the belly for some additional just sense of grounding. And we'll be here for several minutes. So again, take these first 30 seconds or so to adjust. You may want to experiment and wiggle a little forward and back on your support. Have the shoulders overhanging the props a little more. Or have the shoulders a tiny bit more on the props. Just see what feels like a really nice supported back bend shoulder opener for you. Deepen the breath. Allow the whole body to get heavy. Allow the tongue, the jaw, the eyes to relax. Visualize where we had that block pressing in, first at the hairline and then at the very top of the head. And see if you can feel those two points just melt like butter. As the jaw softens, both the crown of the head and forehead just melt and relax. Feel the hips heavy. Left shoulder, right shoulder, heavy. As the heart gently opens. Relax fully here, and you'll hear my voice again in several minutes.
So this is our final pose for this practice. I invite you to stay here as long as possible if you do have more time. If you have to move on, just begin to deepen the breath. Really feeling the belly and the chest rise with each in-breath. And soften with each out breath. Remove any sandbags or weights that are on the body. Gently wiggle the fingers and toes. And draw the chin into the chest and use your elbows pressing one and then the other to come on up. Slide your legs out of the strap if they were bound. And just move the props to the side, coming to a comfortable cross-legged seat. And take the palms face down on the thighs. Feel the two sits bones really rooting into the ground beneath you and the crown of your head rising away from that space. Dip the chin slightly, feel the back of the neck long. Imagine heavy weights on the shoulders so the shoulders relax. And like your collarbones were two canoes paddling away from one another. So you get a little taller, chest a little broader. We'll conclude our practice with a long, slow, deep breath, inhaling through the nose, filling up, the belly, ribs, chest, torso expands with breath. And exhaling all the way, nose or mouth. Bring the hands to prayer at heart center. Fuse the palms together, maybe rub the palms creating a little heat between the hands and then pressing right hand and then left hand into the chest, into the heart. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. Dip the chin, blink the eyes open and congratulate yourself on taking this time and cultivating a restorative practice. From my heart to yours, namaste.